And I'm talking to you, whoever's listening and watching, talking to you. It's what is what you are willing to do to set yourself apart. I'll tell you this, it might be saturated, but not everyone's gonna do the work. Nope. Not everyone's gonna do what it takes. Not everyone's gonna take do the work it takes for them to get to where me and Brad are at. Not everyone's gonna do it. Everyone can, everyone has the ability to, but not everyone will. Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we have an amazing guest for you. Former notary signing agent, now signing service owner slash notary signing agent out of the great state of Utah. Also loan signing system ambassador, trying to hype this guy up, Derek Van Otten. How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> appreciate it. Good, Brad. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate you and I appreciate our friendship. So uh, I'm excited to be here. Me too. It seems like I just met, I just saw you uh, last week, but in fact, I did just see you last week. And uh, that's Pedro. right. We had the privilege of doing it. We were together. And uh, what were your thoughts? Did you enjoy that? Man, I got some good nuggets from that. I got to, uh, you know, you, you you think you're doing well and then you get, surround yourself with other people and you're like, okay, I can definitely step up my game uh, in what I'm doing. So I love I love going and meeting with other successful people and I like meeting with people that are more successful than me. So so I, I loved it. Got so many good nuggets from it. Same here. And then he's already dropping nuggets 10 seconds in. Get in better rooms, people. If you're the best, most successful signing agent that you're hanging out with, you're hanging out with the wrong signing agents. Now, that doesn't mean you don't give back. 100% to people that you can help. But at the same time, you also want to challenge yourself. Point in case, Mark was Mark Wills was our teacher and one of the teachers at the Mastermind last week in San Diego. Yeah. And then literally, as soon as we all left, the next day he flew out to do his own Mastermind to get in rooms with people more successful than him. So there's levels to the business game. You're always trying to level up. So don't think you have plateaued because there's always another level. So I love that nugget. That's right. Awesome. So this style podcast is actually kind of a little bit of a mix of Mark Wills's channel, where we see a little bit of personal background, as well as the notary background, the personal background, is just so people can relate and find out more about you, Derek, because other than that on the road episode with Mark, they may not know that much about you. And also that episode was probably at least a few years old by now, I think. And yeah. uh, I think you just did a follow up as well. Um, but we're going to mix yes, I did. personal stuff. Uh, and then also okay. some really good nuggets, because you have a lot, both as a signing agent who was doing $10,000 even before you took the loan signing system course and a signing service owner who is doing nationwide business. So the notaries watching this who are really trying to develop themselves and get a lot from this conversation. So I'm going to try to pull as much out as I can, but starting with the Great. personal side, if that's okay. Of course. Cool. So uh, were you born and raised in Utah? Just tell me a little bit about where you're from and kind of where you grew up. I am. I'm, bo I'm born and raised in Utah. Uh, is, I, Grew up with two siblings, or I just say, just me and my brother, <clears throat> who's also a signing agent and a signing service owner. And so it was just the two of us growing up in in Utah, and our parents are still together, and they live not too far away from us. And uh, we have we have a blast here. I'm, I'm married with two kids right now, and they have a blast here as well. We're not too far away from the mountains, and we like to get away when we can and go up into the mountains area. We love it. Okay, so you're in, into the nature. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what well, you got? Have you ever got? Have you ever been to Tennessee? I haven't been to Tennessee. No. Okay. Well, talk to me about that. We we we'll get you in that, one of our cabins at Pigeon Forge, and uh, okay, a lot of nature, a lot of a lot of animals, bears, all that good stuff. I think I'd be right up your alley. Yeah, I've heard good things about Tennessee, and maybe I can do some uh, Bigfoot hunting while I'm up there too. Who knows? Yes, more likely to see bears than Bigfoot, probably. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a good time. A lot of stuff for the kids. Uh, good. How, how old are the kids? I know. You, I think your daughter's four yes so uh my youngest daughter is four my other daughter is 20 yeah I so knew a little, big, little bit of a gap spread. yeah yeah <laughs> well i know you've taken the lessons from age 20 and now you're reapplying it well knocking the dust off and then reapplying them to the four-year-old I, I would imagine Ex exactly it's, it's a learning you know it's definitely a, it was a learning curve on the first one and and uh, applying a lot better a lot of better uh, skills and tactics with the with the younger one. <laughs> there you go. Well, like, okay, that didn't work last time. Let's try yeah. this, this time, and maybe we'll have better results. <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> Are you there? Um, okay, so you, you kind of sound like me a little bit as far as, like, I've been in Maryland, born and raised, grew up, and, you know, uh -huh. I moved too much. Most of my family's here. Uh, how about uh, high school for you? So, I guess somewhere in Utah, I mean, was, was Derek a uh, introvert, extrovert? You know, I talked to Chanel. She was a band geeky. What was kind of your deal in high school? What did you like to do? <laughs> so in high school, I went through a couple of phases in high school. Um, I loved high school, by the way. I, I I found high school was a breeze. I mean, I got a 
3.5. I I thought it was easy. I liked going. I, I didn't like waking up early, but I liked going because I could be with my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a full-time job while I was in high school. And and so, I, I, yeah, waking up was not ideal for me because I, I worked the night shift at a job mm -hmm. full-time. I didn't get off work until like 10 or 11. Then I take a bus back home and, and, oh, and try to get to sleep. And so I probably averaged like four hours of sleep a night, which I probably still do about now. That probably started that. Um, <laughs> but I went through a couple of different phases of, of high school. I went through uh, a stage where I hung out with one group of uh, people then a, a stage where I hung out with a different group of people. And so, yeah, I went through a couple of phases. It was, it was interesting. It was, sometimes you see your pictures, you're like, oh, wow, that, yeah, that was me. All right. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> what was I thinking? What did the yearbook photo look like, though? Uh, so I had I had uh, one year I had slick back hair. So I used to hang out with with I used to hang out with gangbangers <laughs> in, in the beginnings of, of uh, school. So See, this, is what I'm to, of, this is what I'm trying to pull out of you for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> so I hung out with a lot of uh, gang members, actually. I, I, I was not in a gang, but I did some I might have uh, participated in some gang affiliated activity here and there. But then as I as I grew up, I started hanging out with different groups of friends. I started hanging out with some of the jocks. Uh, I like I love still playing sports. So I started hanging out with a lot of the jocks in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I also hung out with people that just like to have fun. We just we just would go out, go to a movies, go laser tag, different things like that. So I hung out with a few different people um in high school. It, it, but then I kind of brought them all together and we were friends. So I was definitely not introvert. I was definitely an extrovert. Love it. <laughs> and and I, I asked that just to give people background because notaries come in all shapes and sizes as yeah. business owners. And some are more introverted when they start their business journey and some are more naturally extroverted, but it really does not matter. Uh, it doesn't. And that's kind of where we're going with that. But uh, I love to get the, the peel the layers back and to see what you're. <laughs> yeah, you definitely are peeling back some layers here. <laughs> yeah, see, well, I, I'm not afraid to dig more than Mark, but Mark, <laughs> you know, God bless him. He, uh, <laughs> He, he is trying to inspire people and I, I am also trying to inspire, but also try to give some nuggets. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, one of the thing you already brought up, which was you were in a room and not the best room. And you, you just figured out that you might have to start working into a different room and, and to, and to put yourself around, you know, maybe more successful people, more people aligned with yeah. you. So again, I, I love that common theme. It's already coming up five seconds in. <laughs> um, okay, great. High school sounds like it went well. Uh, I've had kind of a similar journey about, about the same GPA. Um, how about college? Did you go to college at all? I did. I went to I went to a local community college. I felt like I was supposed to, so I did. And I was on a track record of maybe probably participating in about 10 years of college, but I wouldn't have been a doctor. I mean, it's just having a full-time job mm -hmm. and trying to go, go to college and do homework. I just I just wasn't feeling it. Like I just I just did it because I felt like I had to. I just felt like Maybe I won't be a loser if I go to college, even though I had a full-time job, though. But I remember I I was in one of my classes. It was actually a psychology class. And the professor, he was asking a question. It was first day of class. And he was asking the question. I don't remember exactly how he phrased it. But it's the – you've all heard the question. It's, it's similar to what do you want to be when you grow up mm -hmm. type of thing, right? And I remember just kind of thinking and with my last name being Van Otten, I was at the towards the back of the room with V's are in the back. So okay. I was sitting towards the back and I'm, I'm listening to everyone go and talk and they're talking about what they want to be when they grow up. And I was thinking, racking my brain, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? And it came to me, I want to be, I want to run my own business. That's what it came to me. So when it was my turn, I stood up, said, my name is Derek. I want to run my own business. And I, at the time I was going to college for computer science. Okay. And I knew computers and technology, I knew they were the future. I knew it. So I wanted to get into computer science. I wanted to be ahead of the game, ahead of the curve on it. But it was like a whole different language that my brain just couldn't wrap around with computer science. It was just phasing so quickly. And I just couldn't keep up. Uh, again, I graduated high school in 99. So this is late 90s, early 2000s. Technology just, you know, like a rocket ship took off. Mm -hmm. And I had a hard time keeping up with it. And I just was like... I don't want to do this. I don't want to be doing computer science. I don't want to be in college. I want to run my own business. And that was kind of the, the start of the downfall of me attending college. And I, I dropped out of college. Again, at this time, I had been in college for three years, okay. a couple classes a semester. It just was, like I said, it was going to take me about 10 years and I wouldn't even be a doctor. So it's yeah, it's that was the start of me. 
it's dropping out. It's interesting, but it's really scary because let me just share. I went to uh, Drexel in Philly, Drexel University oh, yeah. for civil engineering. I graduated in, uh, a year later, 2000, uh, high school. And high school was relatively easy for me as well. I went to school because that was the path that I was you know, told a lot, as a lot of people yes. were. That was the path I would say, you know, millennials have a, they realize college is not all it's cracked up to be unless you're right. a really a good drive for what you want to do and a passion for what that career is. And also you should know what your return on your income or, or investment is going to be on that degree because not all will yeah. pay out. But I had a similar you know thing. I was working full-time in high school, working uh, in college on the weekends, just driving back to Baltimore. And for me, it was restaurants. It was my full-time job, which I haven't asked you yet what that job is to so hold that nugget. But it was yeah. a new deal. By year two, I was doing my classes and but now I was on like calculus five and I was just like man this is starting to get a little bit much for me and then I and that was the I got uncomfortable and instead of me saying you know what let me get over this wall and you know buckle down I was just like I had kind of that same moment which is like I don't I don't really want to do this like I'm not sure why I hear you uh but it took you know all of high school and you know a year and a half in college to realize that like I don't think this is for me and uh, and I did the same. I also dropped out, but and I went to oh, okay. restaurants uh, full time at that point. And I was twenty, and uh, became a GM at the twenty one for Pizza Hut back in the day, and did that for you know another um, sixteen years until I found loan signings. But what so lead, well, let me lead to the next question: which, What was the job or jobs you were working during high school and college full time? So I worked at a jewelry manufacturing plant. So yeah. they specialize in recognition awards. So let's just say you wanted to recognize some of your team members for five years of service. Right. And you get like a superlative uh, signings little emblem made and you you could attach it to a watch or a clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I worked. And I worked on a manufacturing line there. Like I said, I started when I was 16 there and I worked there for 10 years full time. And I worked my way up the ladder, became, became middle management and... And became a manager, and I, I did that for ten years before I started my entrepreneur endeavors. But, but that's what I was doing since high school and into college. And I just figured, you know, I'm making more than a lot of my peers, and is, is really college and school the route for me? And, and that's when I just decided, yeah, it's time, it's time, it's time to leave this and just focus on, on my career at the time that I thought I'd be doing. But obviously. I got tiresome because in my head, I'm thinking I, I need to run my own business. And I would talk to people around me at my job and we would talk about starting businesses together and it never really took off, but I was always just thinking, or then what's my next plan? What's my next move? What's my exit strategy out of this job actually as well. So what kind of started that bug? Cause you had the gall to answer in the college classroom that I want to start my own business. So yeah. clearly there were some things fomenting in the background prior to that. So what books were you reading or who was it that inspired you or got that, you know, that thing floating around in your brain about starting a business? Was it, you know, rich dad, poor dad, or what was it? It was, I would say, well, I, I'll, I'll go back, back, back to when I was younger. My, I remember one time my mom, my mom shared with me, one time she asked me what, you know, what do you want to be? We all ask our kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? This is before I was even in school. Uh -huh. And I don't remember this. Well, actually I do. I remembered it when she told me it, but she said that I said I wanted to be a contractor because oh. I saw that a contractor hired everyone to do the job. And then they, <laughs> they took all the money and then distributed it out. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense why I said that. I also remember in elementary school, my, my little girlfriends, they'd make, they they were big. You, you're so you're about the same age as me. They'd make friendship bracelets. Remember friendship yeah. bracelets in middle school, in elementary. I mean, mm -hmm. and so they were hot, you know. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, yeah, like my like my my girlfriends were making them for two or three bucks, and they said pick pick a couple colors. So I started going to other people from different schools, and say, hey, you like my friendship bracelet? What colors would you like? I'd get two colors from them. Go back to my friends and say, hey, can you make me these. I'd buy them for three bucks and I go flip them for five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I was like a two dollar profit, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm that's big time in over here. I can go to Seven Eleven and get baby, anything I want." Hey, right. <laughs> so I remember that uh, that would probably be the start of me remembering that. But I would say it was it was probably in I don't know where it really stemmed from because my parents both were just middle class worker. I mean, my mom came from a third world country actually. Uh, she got married to my dad when they were in the 30s, moved from the Philippines to the U.S. Mm -hmm. All she ever knew was, you know, just working. My dad just was always blue collar, just worked. He was a, he was a driver and delivery person, and that's all he did for most of his life and mm -hmm. until he retired, actually. So I actually really don't know where 
it came from inside of me. It was just, I think I just, I was just tired of walking around with shoes with holes in them. I didn't like that. I didn't like, I couldn't get new shoes when I wanted them. I, I'm like, I'd have to be like, mom, it's raining. And, and now there's water getting into my shoes. Now can, now can I get new shoes? Right. I, I hated having shaggy hair and, and be like, can I have a haircut, please? Like, I just was tired of just always asking for something and being told no. Like, I was always told, no. and I don't blame my parents. I'm not mad at them for that. I understand their situation. But I was just, I was just tired of being told no. I I don't tell myself no anymore. Like, I, if I want something, I'm I'm going to go get it. And maybe that, me talking out loud right now to you, Brad, is maybe answering my answering that question right now i think that might be it i was tired of being told no to some to things i wanted yeah that will do it and <laughs> it is funny because the like the the billionaires of the on this planet have all had the craziest backstory but that's kind of what it takes to push you so far away from that situation you never want to go back to and they drive the right. hard, the most driven to get away from whatever the, the background is and you know, so anyone watching this, if you have a, you know, I guess I don't want to say tragic background, but just a background that's got challenges and you have some demons from that, you can use that energy in a positive way to really motivate and fuel your drive to, you know, pull, whether it's proving people wrong or not saying, you know, getting tired of having someone say no to you. And I, yeah. and I bet you a million dollars that Derek spoils the crap out of his daughters because <laughs> he will not want that experience that he went through and that's what we all do as parents we always want better than we had and i guarantee he spoils the crap out of them but <laughs> <laughs> you're right about that <laughs> yes well that's your job sir that's your job <laughs> good job i love it um so okay I i'm happy there um very similar journeys uh, you were smart enough to start on your entre entrepreneurial journey earlier than me so that was leading into my next question which was when did you pivot from starting businesses to becoming a notary because i assume Becoming a notary was not your first business. I imagine there may have been no. things prior to that, which is kind of the normal life cycle of an entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I, I would say, you know, I always had that entrepreneurial bug inside of me. I actually had a, a coworker from from the job I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want to introduce you to a, a gentleman. And he he has a finance firm. And I think, you know, he's looking for more people. I think I think you'd be a good fit, like on a part-time basis, maybe. <laughs> And I said, yeah, let me, let me, let me talk to him. So I went and talked to this gentleman and he, you know, he was doing very well. He was making over 200,000 a year running this finance firm. And he was telling me like, Hey, you know, I I'll help you. I'll mentor you and coach you and I'll help you get your licenses. And you can, you can start a finance firm as well. And you can hire people into your, into your own firm. And I thought this, this, I kind of, I kind of like the idea of this. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually got, I got my licenses. He was mentoring me. And that's when he really started uh, cracking me open a little bit more, like just kind of breaking some of the barriers I had of myself and also my ideologies where I was, I just told him I was struggling in college and he, you know, he, he's the one, one of the people I said, maybe, maybe it's not for you then, you know, like you're not guaranteed anything. If you finish college, it doesn't, you're not guaranteed anything. Sure. You're just going because you feel like you need to go. And, and I was like, yeah, you're right. So he's, he helped me. I think he helped me kind of mold me into the some of the entrepreneurial tendencies that I have now and some of the skills that I have now is like sales skills, marketing skills, um, overcoming objections, skills, things like that. He he helped guide me on that journey. And uh, he 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 was very important to me for for a long time. And then that's when I said, okay, now I want to start exploring other avenues. He introduced multiple sources of income to me he started introducing me to books that that's when i started really reading into books actually was this is my mid 20s now mm -hmm. and he was like you need to start reading some of these books and that's when i started getting into motivational and entrepreneurial books and that's when i start, that's when it just my mind was just like a whole other universe like yes this is where i belong this is what i should be reading this is where i feel comfortable this is what i like to do and that's when i really started getting into my rhythm of entrepreneurship Love it. So it sounds like he was your first mentor for sure. He was and, my first uh, mentor. Yeah. And and a lot of us just need that. The problem is if, if your parents are entrepreneurs or or you don't get that bug early, you know, a lot of us would just kind of go through, I guess, the go through life without much direction. Um, so it's nice that that person stepped in and was uh, you know willing to to uh, work with you. And for any notaries watching, Derek is a mentor. I'm a mentor. 
in our areas uh, of the U.S. for the loan signing system and to other notaries who aren't loan signing right. system. But just as a quick tip, because we see it every day in Facebook groups, uh, a good suggestion when you're looking for a mentor in your area is, you know, try to bring some kind of value to the equation. Because if you yeah. just ask, are there anyone willing to mentor, no one's going to answer you, number one. Number two, right. it, you know, it comes off as transactional versus, you know, find out who is kind of a leader in your area and just message them directly and just say, hey, I would love to get 20 minutes of your time on the phone or or half an hour uh, for coffee or lunch. Be happy to pay, you know, pay for your time or get you lunch or, or whatever, have coffee. And, um, you know, pick your brain and also come prepared. OK, so show up with, you know, clearly you've done your research on whatever it is that you are looking for information, not tell me everything because there's not. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Unload but, everything onto me. Yeah. yeah. But be prepared, uh, DM directly and bring some kind of value. And, uh, and and then if you find the right person who's willing to share, they're willing to where you are always willing to help people that are prepared, hungry. And, you know, are asking questions inquisitive and we can, it's pretty obvious to us that those are the, the people we know will go well because they're going to keep, keep grinding and hustling. They have that, that, that edge that, you know, I have the tiger basically, like we can all spot it. So we're happy to share five, 10, 20 minutes, half an hour with people uh, or to show up to our meetups if you're in Utah or Maryland. Right. <laughs> right. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to turn down a free, a free drink or a free lunch, right? If, you, if it's offered to me, like you said, I'm like, yeah, I'm now, now let's talk now. Yeah. You got me. You have me lunch. You got a half hour of my time right now. Let's let's talk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so love it. So you pivoted from the financial services side to the next business. Uh, and then what, what was after that? Yeah, there, there was a few businesses there that, okay. that didn't work out. You know, there, there, there was a few different ones there. I probably, oh gosh, maybe three other ones I, I, I try to start. And there was probably like 10 other ideas that I had in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, well, let me expand my finance firm. What if I got, instead of just doing insurance and investments, what if I started maybe doing mortgages or real estate? And what if I can bring value, like free value? What if I just got my notary commission? And I just, I'll just do it free. Anyone that needs something notarized, I'll do it free. So one of my friends that used to be in my finance firm, he started working at a bank. And he told me he got his notary commission. And I just said, how was it? Was it easy, simple? He's like, man, we took those tests for our insurance and investment license. He's like, this is a breeze for your notary commission. And literally it was. I, I studied over the weekend and I I passed. I think I missed one question on my state exam. It was, it compared to everything else I had done, this, this was a piece of cake. And he told me, he's like, actually, I have a, I had, he said, I had a friend who, he's a mobile notary. Uh -huh. And he went into a, a hospital late at night to notarize some documents and he charged like 50 bucks or something like that. I thought, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. And I thought, what is a, a mobile notary? And then I also was like, I'm going to start, I'll start doing taxes. And I looked at what do tax preparers do in the off season? Just to get some ideas. And someone said, right. they do notary work. So I'm like, okay, notary work. But when I got my commission, I thought, I can only charge 10 bucks though. How, many, how are you going to make money charging 10 bucks? Mm -hmm. So I kind of did some, some YouTube searching. Sure. Guess who popped up? Mark Wills popped up, and I just and I just saw some of his videos, and I thought, oh, this is cool! Like becoming a, a signing agent, signing service. I didn't even know it existed. It was far away from my brain, mm -hmm. but a signing agent seemed kind of cool, and I thought that'd be kind of fun. And that's when I started. I said, okay, let me let me do that. Let me. I ordered my. I bought a used printer, got my supplies, got a lot of my supplies from Dollar Tree. And I was like, all right, I'm going to load up on some supplies here. Took I actually took a bunch of supplies from FedEx. I'm like, they don't need all these rubber bands and paper clips. So they're here for the taking. So I grabbed some of those and stocked up my notary bag and said, let's let's do it. And I didn't take a course, by the way. I actually, well, I take it back. I took the NNA's very simple course when I first started. Okay. I I actually saw Mark's Mark Will's earlier videos probably within a year of him starting the loan signing system, but I didn't do it for many years actually i just was like i can i can figure this out i can i i can, I can figure this out uh -huh. and and boy i mean i did but boy was i wrong i could have i could probably be a lot further if i took it but talking about how i found my mentor and how he really changed my life uh -huh. and then when i wasn't doing finance he was still a good friend of mine but he wasn't mentoring me like right. like he used to and i should have got a mentor i should have got a mentor that's 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 so that's a, that's something I'm going to say right now. You if you really want to be serious about something, get a mentor who's successful in it so that they can help you. You don't feel like you're, I felt alone a lot of times. I felt alone a lot of times. 
And that was a big, that was a big fault of my own. Yeah, that's an, that's a, that's a great point. And Mark, uh, the way Mark phrases it to people is when your kids are trying to learn to swim, what do you do? You hire a swimming coach. When they're learning basketball, yeah. you give them a basketball coach. But when you're trying to start a business, you just figure it out on your own. You choose yeah. diversity. <laughs> what could go wrong? And right. as you experience, and we've all experienced, a lot can go wrong because yes. you don't know what you don't know. And, and yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy how when we're young, we don't value our time and we want to save all the money. And then when we're older, it's the reverse. We realize time is so limited. It always was. Yes. But we recognize the importance of having a mentor. So, you know, since uh, I, I started flipping real estate that I mean, from that point on, that was 2019. I realized, like, I always need to have a mentor in any new skill I am trying to learn. So whether right. it's notary, being a sign, signing service owner. Learning YouTube, like I'm li literally listening to uh, Mr. Beast. Uh, oh, you know, okay. Uh, his his book on Audible now. Uh, started listening yesterday, you know, because I'm in this game. Like, well, let me just not try to figure this out for eight years. And like, let me let me learn from someone who's got right you know, millions of subscribers who might know a thing or two and <laughs> right. can drop some knowledge on me without even thinking. So yes, I 100% agree. Get a mentor, but I love the fact that you became a notary as a value add to your existing clients because that already tells right. me. Your, your head's in the right spot because you're always trying to, you know, add value to your clients because, you know, if you do that, the rest will take care of itself. And if you're a notary who's more focused on the transaction and the fees and getting as much money as possible instead of building yeah. relationships, taking care of people because it's a people business. Uh, unlike, Absolutely. Unlike being in a real estate you know, agent, you're not always hunting. Like once you have a great relationship with a title client or a lender or realtor, like, you're probably good that as long as you feed that relationship, take care of each other, always look out for them and do right by yeah. them at all times, you know, you're, you're good. You don't have to hunt anymore. So um, that's kind of the short sighted thing I see a lot of from a signing service owner's perspective, which we're going to touch on in a minute, but okay, um, I just, I'm just impressed that you were thinking about that um, at that time. So that tells me you had a good mentor, the first one. Um, yeah. So yeah. So went through it, figured it out. You did eventually ramp up to 10 K, but you, but yeah. point, you were like, let me call Mark because I think I'm still leaving money on the table. I could be doing better yes. trying to get to the next level, whatever that is. And that's kind of when you reached out. Yeah. So, um, I slid in his DMS a few times to ask him some questions and he was like, yeah, definitely take my course and that will help you. And I just was kind of just asking, I would ask questions once in a while, but I still wasn't, but I was following him on social media, following him on YouTube. I watched, I'd watch his videos and watch his trainings that, that, that were available. And exactly. I was, I was plateauing. I just was like, I'm, I'm making a hundred thousand a year, but at the rate I'm going, I'm just going to stay here. And, and how, how can I leverage my time? How can I leverage my work? I don't want to do this forever. And so I was like, how can I leverage myself? Right. And it, it was just doing some soul searching. And I realized I need to get a mentor. And so I, again, I reached out to Mark and I actually, this is, I actually proposed a proposition to him. I said, what if I just pay you to mentor me directly? Like I'll pay you like $500 for an hour of your time. And you just like, just let me, let me pick your brain for an hour and I'll pay you five, 500 bucks. I, I threw that on the table and he, he responded back said, I'd love to help you take my course <laughs> that was for, five, for 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I said, okay. So um, I still sat on it and I, I actually bought tickets for his 2021 convention. I believe that was the Las Vegas. One. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually got tickets for that. I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to surround myself with people. I'm going to get some information and that will help me break through my plateau. But I thought, well, I kind of feel weird. I feel like everyone's in this loop besides me that will be there. Right. And I was like, I kind of want to be in the loop a little bit on what's going on. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take the course. You wanted to be a part and of LSS Nation right here. I want to be part of LSS Nation. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Brad, but I coined that phrase. I just want to make that nice. public information. <laughs> LSS Nation, trademark by DVO. That's right. <laughs> and so I, I took the course and I was blown away. I'm like, I yeah. didn't know all this. I did not know all this. I was so ignorant, so ignorant, just thinking I could do it all. Total pride and how to swallow my pride. Right. And I remember when you get through a certain section of the course, you get to have a one-on-one -on -one call with him and a few others. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh, look, he got to me. He's like, look, who's finally here after years <laughs> of messaging. Me, look, who's finally here. And I said, I'm finally here. And, uh, <laughs> and we built a relationship uh, right, right away. And I've learned so much. Like I've learned so much. And he, now he's my mentor and I can message him and he gives me advice. And I definitely have broken through my plateau and I am just climbing and climbing and climbing up 
more than I imagined, actually. It's more than I imagined. And um, so, yeah, yeah, you have to get your mentors. You have to take training courses. And that has just been huge for me because it was, you're right. It's what I didn't know, right? The things you don't know. And now that I know things, I'm like, I can't, I can't let this information go to waste. I have to act upon these, uh, the knowledge that I know now. Like I, there's, I can be a signing service owner. I didn't know that. Now I need to act upon it. I got to make it happen. Oh, I can make quarter million, half a million, a million dollars a year. I didn't know that. Now that I know, I'm going to act upon it and do it now. And so it's, it's been huge for me. Yeah, so I, I agree 100. The mentorship—it's just funny because now I make decisions so much faster now, and I, and uh, you know, as you as you get farther along in your entrepreneurial journey and you have more success, you realize that nothing happens until you make a decision, and whether yeah, it's right. the right decision or the wrong decision, nothing happens until you make one. So uh -huh. the faster you make the decision, the faster you can figure out was it the right one, was it the wrong one, and then move on and pivot if you have to. But and I, and that's I literally get messages from from notaries. I was talking about it like on a video two weeks ago. Someone reached out that had reached out to me two years ago asking about, is it still uh -huh. a good time? And my response is, yes, it's still a good time if you're still willing to put in the work. It's not easy. It's not a side hustle. It's a business. And yes. uh, and, and they'll probably message me in two more years asking me in 2026. Right, right. It's still a good time. I'm like, bro, it's been a good time. Yeah. But when I started this business, the first thing I thought of was, oh, my God, why did I not start this sooner? Yes, uh, and it's funny how that works. But um, so good, good transition into you started a signing service. So how did that come about? Was it just another value add for your clients? Is my guess? Yeah. So you know, it was a progression of I was working with signing services, mm -hmm. and I thought I'm leaving money on the table. Sure, I need to go direct because I'm I'm seeing the fee that the the notary fee, and I know I'm not getting that. Sure. So, uh, but I wasn't mad at that. I knew. You know, they're taking their cut. I was never mad that I'm not getting the whole fee. I I always, I'm a business owner. I understand. I always understood that. Yeah, you respect I, the game. But I thought, I understand the game. But, you know, I, I, I would do a couple jobs for local companies. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, so there's local companies are hiring notaries. I, I didn't understand. All right, I didn't know. I thought I was just doing jobs for nationwide signing services that are from other states. So then I started going and introducing myself to title companies. And I started, I wanted, like, I want the, I want the whole fee. I want the whole instead of instead of getting you know ninety bucks, I want one hundred fifty bucks, um, because I could do less signings and spend more time with my family if I was getting the whole fee, because I was taking jobs because like I got I got to provide I got to provide I got to provide, but if I can make more I can work less if I choose I can I can choose whatever I want which I liked, so I started like let's not leave money on the table let's get the whole fee so that's why I started marketing direct then that I'm just doing local business so whenever. They have to do mail outs to hire out notaries. They're using a signing service. And then some of my clients were complaining like, hey, do you any know any notaries in this area? And I'd be like, yeah, actually I do. Yeah, because you know we're the jobs we're getting back, the, the signing service isn't very responsive. The, the work we're getting back is not like your, your work. And so I started thinking, oh, I should be their signing service then. I have connections. Right. I've made connections now and I'm going to start doing this. So I just started rolling. I'm like, I, again, I want the whole fee. I'm leaving money on the table because if they're going to a signing service, I'm getting all their local work, but I'm not getting all, all their work. Right. And I want all their work. Yes, sir. And so that's, again, it's the entrepreneur wheel going, okay, how can I bring value? How can I be of service to my clients? And my, my, the value I can bring is the job that I produced. That's why they love me. It's flawless work. I want to bring flawless work from anywhere in the country to them. And that's when the wheel started turning. Like I can start a signing service. So, how did you learn how to start a signing service? I I, I started taking Mark Will's course, the the next level. It talked about go. starting a starting signing. Yep, starting a signing service. So that was a big help. And then I also asked my peers. Mm -hmm. I called. In fact, Mark told me because he's my mentor, and I reached out to him, and he said, "I want you to call these four people. I want you to do it by the end of the week, and then get back to me." And I did it within two days. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to wait all week. I'll do it in two days. So I called up all four people he told me to call. I called all four of them. Within two days, I talked to them. I talked to Mark. And I just said, all right, let's, he just said, all right, let's, let's, you got this. You can do this. And, and then off I went. So they, they were very helpful. But also surrounding myself with the peers, being in the ambassador group that you and I are in, 
like I'm able to pick everyone's brain there and just get in and, 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 you know, just, I put myself in those situations. I have to put myself in those situations. And I think we all do, you know, we all need to take ourselves and put ourselves in situations we want to be. I want to be around successful signing service owners. I need to put myself there. It's not going to happen through osmosis. It's not going to happen magically. I have to put myself there. And that's what I did. I'm like, all right, let me, let me connect with these people. And, uh, be, um, let me befriend them so I can pick their brain. Like me and you we were in, in San Diego, me and you were in the car together and I was just picking your brain, you know, and I appreciate you sharing. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to share. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't know what I don't know. So that's what I love about the mentorship is that if you're in the right room, even if you have more revenue, you're not necessarily, uh -huh. you don't have better operations necessarily. So sure. You can all learn, you know, there are notaries out here that are killing in the revenue, but their back end is terrible. And some people have an amazing back end, but they need to get out and market more. And some uh -huh. people are great at hiring, but their systems are terrible. So you can always, if you're in the right room, don't uh, overlook people because you can always learn, which is why I like our meetups, because you have a nice, exactly. there's a, a wide range of skill sets of people in their journeys on various different parts, and they can all learn from each other. That's why I try to stop talking as much and I, get, I try to get the experience and the intermediate folks to chime in so that they can right or not just for me because there's so many different ways to to this business to grow it and scale it so uh but yeah be in the right room be, but you're like you said you have to be intentional about putting yourself in that room and not having yes. that ego that pride that like no i got this like no you don't got this because the only time i would say you you almost got this is if you are like the number one revenue signing service in the country or in the world okay sure then you probably got it Maybe um, you got maybe it. Maybe <laughs> it's time to get put in a CEO and try a different business. Like you, you win, dude. But other than that, <laughs> right. whoever it is. But um, yeah, so always trying to learn. I agree 100. percent And next segue, since as a signing service owner, you know what is a, a great way? And I watched your podcast, so I think I know the answer to this. But what is a great way to get on your preferred list uh, at your signing service? And what is the name of your signing service? Yeah, so the name is Peak Signing. In fact, you can find it's in Mountain Peaks. I live in the beautiful state of Utah. We're surrounded by mountains. So Peak Signing everywhere. Yeah, social media, websites, all peaksigning.com. Uh, you can go there. Uh, podcast, podcast as well. Spotify. Yep, yep, Utah. Yep, I, I, I got a hold of that handle. In fact, I'm going to start trademarking it as well now. So <laughs> nice. I'm working on that <laughs> process so I can trademark it. Love it. Uh, you going to do, do, do some merch? Some Peak Signing? Maybe, merch? maybe. I maybe I should. should. Yeah, yeah, that, that would yeah. look good. The mountains and everything. You're like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, merch. So merch in, merch in the bio link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, click here. Don't. No, <laughs> oh man, that's what we're learning. We're learning how to put all the little clicks in the in our YouTube videos. Yep, I'm with you. I'm gonna plug into Mr. Beast as well. Um, but yeah, so that's the name of my signing service. And I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Oh, how do people connect? Get preferred. Got it. Yes. yes. So yeah, I always tell people, you know. If you've never done a signing with me, don't ask me to mark you preferred, mm -hmm. but I'm more than happy to give you a chance. Just introduce yourself to me. Yeah, you can go to my website. There's a there's a notary sign up section there and you can connect with me there and go on my social media. You can DM me. I'm more than welcome to. And I get emails daily from signing agents all over the country. Uh, but, you know, I, I would say don't ask to be my preferred because you haven't done a job. For me. I don't know if you're good yet or not, but I would love to connect with you. I'd love to meet you. I'd love for you to, to give me a little bio, something short and simple and sweet. And tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your experience, any training you're doing, any highlights that would make me want to use you over anyone else. And then I'm and then I'll be more than happy to give you a chance uh, in my area. But, yeah, if you do a couple good jobs for me, everything looks great. I'll definitely be happy to mark you preferred and put you at the top of my list. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the best way. The best way is to just reach out, introduce yourself. I don't want your whole life story or your <laughs> resume. Uh, I'm not going to read it. Nope. Uh, somebody just sent me a, actually a, a cool little, uh, a little poem, a little notary poem. They just oh, sent me cool. actually right now. That's different. Oh, um, yeah. And I started reading it, but then I noticed it was, it got a little long. I, I gave up on it. My, my attention span <laughs> was like, I got other things to do. But the, the, the first half that I read was great. And I was like, Hey, love this. I got you marked in my system. The next thing we have in your area, I'm going to send you a, a text message to uh, for you to grab it. So, so yeah, that, that she definitely stood out with that little notary poem. That was cool. <laughs> I love it. So key points, keep it short, yes. call and introduce yourself because you will stand out that way. Again, be mindful of their time, not just Derek or me, but anybody. They're a business owner. They have limited time just like you do. So keep it short. Yeah. Sound really friendly on the phone. That doesn't hurt. Exactly. And yeah. And even if they, you know, you don't ask 
you know, can you please Mark refer? Because we don't know you yet. You're a stranger to us. But, you know, what would it take to get Mark referred? And also, I would love to have that opportunity to work with you and your team because I'm going to take great care of your clients. And here's how I'm going to right. call from the table when there's issues. I'm going to over communicate. You know, I'm going to get scans ASAP. I know where my FedEx ship centers are, but whatever it is you do well, I speak by, I'm yes. by Google. Whatever it is, give us the short elevator pitch in a friendly way. Uh, but if you call, you'll stand out. I know it's uncomfortable, but if you call, I promise you, for two signing service owners, they get emails all day. We don't get phone calls like that to introduce ourselves. No. I would say in a day, I'd maybe get one or two out of you know the hundreds and thousands we do throughout the year. So you will stand yes. out for sure. And also- Yeah, and I, and I would also say- Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You do. You go first. Yeah, and I was going to say too- Master how you, your your opening line. I think a lot of oh, people yeah. are opening line to me is, "Hi, my name is Derek. I'm from Utah. Do you do signings in this area?" Oh God. <laughs> okay. Well, of course. I'm a national signing service. Wherever the clients are, I'm going to send a notary there. Wherever they are. So, do I do signings in your area? Yes. Do I know the whole map of your area? No. So, don't ask me. You know, I'm not a geography major. Right. I don't know where this part of Texas is. I don't know. I'm sorry, but. Just master your your elevator pitch. Elevator means you're in the elevator, so you got a very limited time, <laughs> and you want to stand out. And and so just master your opening line. Don't be like, do you do signings in my area? Yeah, of course I do. The answer is yes, I do signings everywhere in the country. In fact, with Ron now with remote online notar notarization, I do notarizations anywhere in the world now. Yes, sir. So so yeah, so the answer is always yes. So that's not the best opening line is what I'm saying. Yeah, it doesn't make the best first impression. And and just assume that they're they're national and worldwide with Ron. If they're not, they'll tell you. But just assume they are. That makes yes. us feel better anyway. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, kind of, it kind of sounds like when you when you lead with that, it's just like, first off, I don't know your city. Or if they email right. you, they'll say, hey, I service these counties. Guys, there's 50 states, yeah. probably 1,500, 2,000, 5,000 counties. Like, who knows all them? Just give us a zip right. code. And tell us your elevator pitch. I great advice. Know your elevator pitch like that. You can give it at a networking event. You could give it at a bar. You can, yes. You can do it in your sleep. But just, you know, three, four sentences about why you are unique and you bring a ton of value. And the other thing I was going to mention, send thank you cards um, to stand out. Postcards. Yes. Doesn't need to be anything in them, but handwritten thank you cards. Um, you know, I probably get in a month, I may get one or two uh, at most. And it's typically new signing agents because Mark teaches this in his course. So yeah. I did the same thing. So when I get them, I have fondness and respect for it because I respect the game uh, and, and it works and helps you stand out. So there's no hurt either. It does sound. I've, I've probably received less than five. Yeah. And I've been a signing service owner for two years and I've received less than five. And I always think they're cool. And I don't expect anything. I don't want, I don't right. care for a gift card or anything. Yeah. Just like, hey, thanks for using me. I was like, oh, that, that was really, I actually, the last one I just got, I, had, I looked them up again. And I'm very uh, uh, visual, so I, I saw her picture. I'm like, oh, I remember her. All right, I remember. I remember. So, so yeah, that's always a good touch. I agree. And you want the preferred list because if you haven't, uh, I'll link the video uh, here about ways to get added to the preferred list because it gets you more money, folks. Because you get jobs yes. that you want very soon versus being texted way at the bottom of the list. But uh, we'll not go down that rabbit hole. That's a different video for another time. So. <laughs> Let me pivot. What's uh, two common errors you see a lot at your signing service from notaries? Oh, two common errors. So I would say, you know, a lot a lot of notaries forget uh, what's required in your notary section are, are, are three things. It's the venue, state and county, most likely. It's the date, the date you're performing the notarization, and the names of the people you're performing the notarizations. A lot of jurats will just have a, you know, sworn and subscribe before me on this date, and then no names. So a lot of notaries forget to add in the names of the person they're meeting with, especially if it's a split signing and right. they're meeting with one of the two parties. So it's like, who did you just notarize for? Like you just left it totally blank. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's one thing I see a lot. A lot of notaries forget to make sure all three of those important details are there, the venue, the date, and the names of the people you're notarizing. So I see that a lot. Uh, probably another one I see, uh, maybe I, I see a lot is on, going back to split signings, you know, in your notary section, you have to cross out the name of the person you're not with. So a lot of people forget that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're, if there's two people on the, let's just say the deed of trust and you're only meeting with one of them, you need to strike the other person's name and, and, and initial that. So I see that miss, but only not 
if they do catch that, what I see they do, and please don't do this, is on the signature line, they cross out the person's name. Yeah. So let's just say it's John and Jane Doe. You're meeting with John Doe. You should cross out Jane in the notary section only. But I see a lot of notaries cross out Jane on the signature line. It's like, no, she needs to sign still. You yeah. just said she's not signing. Do not strike anywhere other than your notary section. Amen. So those are two that I see, unfortunately, often, and they can be huge. Yes. Yeah. So good way to put it that I tell notaries is the bottom certificate. That is your domain. You are yeah. the ruler of that domain. The rest right. is the lender and titles. So you don't touch that. So it's, it's kind of like property. That's a good way to put Just it. Stay out. Just stay in your little world and you'll be fine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Make it compliant for your state, whatever you got to do. But not, don't touch anything else. You're right. All right. So what is pivoting to marketing? So we talked a little bit about that. You hit the boots on the ground a lot. The title company, I'm guessing. Uh, what is your yep. favorite? What's your favorite way to market? I do like face to face. I want them to remember me. I want them to. I don't know. I, I like to bring something in as well. And so I like to bring something in. I like. I want them to see my face. I want them to see my smile. Most importantly, I want them to see my smile. I want them to see my confidence that I'll take care of them and their clients. So I like to do face to face. That's my favorite. Um, I just think that works best for me as well. And, and, and I think it makes me stand out. So I think that's that's the best way, in my opinion, to do it. I'm right there with you. I, I agree. Uh, we're not, and Derek and I aren't reinventing the wheel here. We're just implementing right. what we've learned in a course from, from yes. other successful people. But we've tried other ways of marketing. It's just in person. And I agree, in person is definitely going to work. You're going to convert more. Uh, you're going to make a great first impression that way. And yeah. the sales cycle will get a lot shorter that way. Now, there is a point where you can't do that when you get much, much bigger as a signing service. And there's other ways to to market. And I think I'm actually going to do a separate video on that. But I think I'll do that with like a group of us um, cool. just for fun, just to keep it interesting. But um, yeah, so in person, 100% agree. What is your, let's say, what's your elevator pitch? If you, And pretend you're yeah. a signing agent again. You're not a signing service right. owner because most people watching aren't or aren't there yet in their journey. True. Um, what's kind of the, the highlights you like to talk about when you go in? So I like to bring something in, like I mentioned, uh, my, my go-to is donuts. I don't know if it's just my area or all over the country, but there, we have some really good donut spots here. And I consider myself a donut connoisseur. I know my donuts <laughs> and I know how to pick a good one. So I know the good shops where to, where to get them from. Mm -hmm. And so I like to bring those in. I like to bring those in with some cards. And so when I usually walk in, you know, there's someone there to greet me or I, you know, I ring the bell to bring someone up to the front. And they see me standing there. They see me standing with donuts. And the first thing I say is, I hope you don't mind, but I brought some donuts for the office. And that's my icebreaker. No one has ever minded that I brought donuts into the office. Not once sure, has someone said, sure how they dare did. you? <laughs> yeah. So that's my icebreaker. I just say, I hope you don't mind, but I brought some donuts for the office. And then I said, and I always ask, are you an escrow officer? And that's my next question, my follow-up question. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask for one or for their assistant. So I'll either ask for the escrow officer or for their assistant. Got it. And, um, you know, if, if there's cards in the front, I usually try to look at those cards real quick to see if one of them is the, the manager of the office, because there's usually a manager if it's a good size office. So I'll try to ask for that person as well. I'm going, I'm going to the top first, you know, so I'm going for the head manager. But whoever's there, I'll take whoever's there. Sure. And I always grab cards while I'm waiting for them to go grab them. I'm, I'm always grabbing the cards. And then I just say, hey, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Derek and I'm a mobile notary. And I always say mobile notary. I know a lot of people say signing agents. But that just, they have no idea what I'm saying when I say signing agent. That's not their language. Their language is, we are mobile notary. So I just say, I'm a mobile notary in the area. I just want to introduce myself. You, do you mind if I give you a card? I always say, do you mind? Because now I'm, I'm opening up communication. I'm opening up dialogue. I want them to talk to me. I don't want them just staring at me. So I just always, I try to ask questions. Hope you don't mind I brought donuts. Do you mind if I give you my card? I'm trying to open up dialogue with them so we can communicate. And I give them my card and just say, yeah, I just want you to know I'm available. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I've always been full time. So I'm like, I'm available anytime. I'm, all, and I always, and I, and this is where I actually give them examples of when they might need me because they might think we handle everything, mm -hmm. we do everything in house, we got our notaries. So I always give them examples. I'm available after hours, weekends. If you're ever double booked or when you finally need to take your vacation, I'm here for you and your clients. Right. And I always say I'm here for them and their clients because who do they care about? They care about their clients. So I always make, I want to make sure I'm, I'm including everybody when I'm saying I'm here for you all. So I try to be inclusive. And oh that's it. God. It's very short and simple. 
Yes, there's so much. Uh, let me just drop all the fire emojis like we're on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so if you if you know, you know, but he dropped so much. So let me just break it down for y'all. First off, he brought some gratitude gift. Now, it doesn't have to be donuts. It could be a, a marketing basket. Anything, yeah. Pens. It could be cookies, baked cookies from home. But he's bringing something in to show appreciation for the fact that he's interrupting their day. And he doesn't want that yeah. to go unnoticed. Because now what happens if you don't bring in some kind of gratitude, something... For that moment, it becomes across as a sales call, and people are annoyed yes. when you're written. But if you interrupt my day and you're bringing me something, it doesn't matter what it is. It's the fact that you respect my time and understand that I'm interrupting you. So I, I appreciate you, and I just want you, just a couple minutes of your time. Thank you so much. Here's some some donuts for you and your team or you know, whoever's there. And that is like he said, walls and defense down, which is great. Yeah. The next thing I love is that he is rifling through the uh, business cards and he's already looking for the decision makers in there. So he knows who to right. or, or who to follow up with later, which is great. Uh, and then you said you're bringing your business cards with the donuts, right? Yep. So while the donuts are being eaten over the next you know day or, or, or four or five hours, best case, if they're really hungry, his business cards yeah. are living, they're living in their kitchen, in the office. Yes. Kitchen. So he is his face is being viewed many times over and over again by the people walking back and forth. That's why I bring a basket too with a bunch of cards and a flyer. Same deal. I want the real estate in their office and I want them to know yeah. who brought these, this for them. And then the next thing I love is that when he gets the conversation going, it's really subtle. If you don't know sales at all or well, you won't, you'll miss it. But he he's actually leading with no questions a couple of different times because he says, do you mind if I give you my card? And the normal response is, no, I don't mind. Right. It opens up the conversation. Uh, yeah. and it's a good no, you know, uh, or, you know, and I love to do that in person and email marketing. At the end, I'll, you know, if I'm doing a call to action, I'll follow up, I'll say, um, would you be opposed to me, you know, bringing in some treats or would you be opposed to right. me, our team solving those problems you're having forever? without any uh, work on your end would you be opposed to do you do you mind to get them to say right. no but it's a it's a positive no and which i love that um so it's no no surprise why uh you're, you're killing it so take the note people <laughs> rewatch this pause it write down and and work it into a conversation uh, in your words that works for you but use the yes. technique and then plug in your personality with the techniques um and then just one real quick one what's kind of your follow-up process loosely what does that look like for you Within 24 hours, for sure. Within 24 hours, I'm sending an email. And my subject line is, hope you enjoyed the donuts. That's my subject line. Um, or, or also, I might even put um, mobile notary service. I might always put that subject line or put them both in. That way, they kind of it correlates. It corresponds. Like, they're, op they're interested in opening it. And and just say, hey, I'll just do, you know, I'll, I'll just do a follow-up question. Like, hey, I appreciate you giving me your time. I know you're busy. I hope you enjoyed the donuts. If me and my team can be of any, or if I can be of any service to you and your team and clients, please don't hesitate to reach out. And it's just very simple. Because again, they don't want to read a whole email. So I just keep a very short email. So that's within 24 hours, I'm sending them an email, whether it's at the end of the day or early the next day. Awesome. I want to be top of mind. I want to stay fresh in their in their mind. Yeah, well, you kept it short and sweet. Again, that's a resounding theme here because- keep it short <laughs> yeah and then he referenced the gift he brought whatever you're bringing reference that in the subject line of the email it will get open for sure because it's fresh yeah. top of mind because he's within 24 hours and the other part he mentioned prior to was he is saying i really want to take care of you and your clients and because he gets it and he also another thing I, is they're just coming back to me is that he also said when you are ready to, you're finally ready to take your vacation and that's yeah. the one as an escrow officer or settlement officer knows that Derek knows how the the world of settlements works is because they are bust. They're kind of like the service industry. You're busting your butt. Yeah. All the time for your clients. You're never really off. You're answering phone calls late on the weekends. And when you're trying to take a vacation, like you're stressing the whole time because you're worried about exactly. those things that are going on while you're gone. Like, God, who's doing my closings? Like, so, so that him saying that automatically gets some immediate credibility because they know that he gets it. So it's beautiful. exactly, and in fact, you know, let's just say I met with only one escrow officer, but I remember I got all those cards. I'm going to email that escrow officer and everyone in the office. Love it. So everyone's getting the email from me, even though I didn't meet them. 
they're going to email because they got the donuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So not, I want them to know them. who it they're came eating, from. They're eating your gift. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I guarantee they're all replying. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. In, yeah. In email chain. Love it. Awesome. Okay. You, this, the podcast has, has paid for itself. People you have, <laughs> I'll, I'll timestamp this one fire emoji at whatever timestamp this is. Go. There we go. There we cool. go. All right. Uh, we're getting to the end. Uh, dude, I do want to hit on this one question about uh, notary saturation. Um, okay. It's like the most popular word post COVID in any business ever. Any yeah. business in America is now saturated, or oversaturated. So let me just preface this. Even if there are a S ton of notaries out there and the market, there's tons of signing agents out there. Does it matter if the market is oversaturated or will your, how you perform in your business separate yourself or does it matter? Every business is saturated and every successful industry is saturated because someone has done it successfully and everyone wants to copy it. You see this all the time. We're the Uber of something. We're the Amazon of something. We're the Google of something. Everyone's trying to be, we're the, we're the Tesla of this, right? Everyone's trying to be the next great thing. And so anyone that succeeded in a market is going to be saturated because everyone saw somebody succeed and they think, oh, if they can do it, I can do it, which is true. If they can, you can, but it's all dependent on what you're willing to do. I'm talking to you, whoever is listening and watching, talking to you. It's what is what you are willing to do to set yourself apart. I'll tell you this. It might be saturated, but not everyone's going to do the work. Nope. Not everyone's going to do what it takes. Not everyone's going to take do the work it takes for them to get to where me and Brad are at. Not everyone's going to do it. Everyone can. Everyone has the ability to, but not everyone will. The question you have to ask yourself is, are you willing to do it? I told myself I was willing to do it. I told myself, if I'm going to pay Mark Wills to mentor me, I'm going to do what he says. Same with my other mentor. If he's going to take the time to mentor me, I'm going to do what he says so I don't waste his time. And that has brought me success. And I was willing to think outside the bubble a little bit too and keep expanding and growing and not giving up. A lot of people give up. Look at the gym every January. Boom, it's packed. What happens? <laughs> October, November rolls around. Back to normal, right? Yep. Everyone has the ability to go, but not everyone will put in the work it takes. And so don't worry about getting hung up on, is it saturated? That's you're just an excuse you're giving yourself. You're already giving yourself a cop-out. Like, oh, it was, it was saturated. Every industry, is, whatever business you want to do, there is people, there's a lot of people that want to do it too. But there are people that always stand out. There's always people that stand out. Are you willing to do what it takes to stand out? That's the real question. Could not have said it better myself. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it just, and, and, and to take it one step farther, why do you think it is that the, that not everyone will succeed? Does it have something to do with what's between our ears maybe? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's tough succeeding. Being successful at anything is tough. It takes hard work. It takes hard grind. No matter what it is you want to be successful at, it takes a lot of effort. It's worth it, though. I'm telling you it's worth it, but it takes a lot. And that's exactly right. It's, what's, it's the six inches between our ears that hold us back. It's the sense of fear. It's the sense of failure. It's all these things that we, again, we just pre-program ourselves with. Again, surround yourself with mentors and, and other peers that want to build you up with you. You can say me and, me and Brad are competitors because we run signing services. We're friends. We help each other out. We give each other tips. We spent hours at dinner and drinks and just talking and sharing ideas and ideologies and, and concepts with each other. We're friends. Find peers that want to support. I want Brad to do fantastic. I want, I want Brad to retire in five years. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what his goal is, but that's what I want for him. I want him to succeed. Surround yourself with people that want you to succeed. I love it. And that's the thing. The, the, the other part of that is when those obstacles come up in your business, no matter what it is, if you have a mentor, if you have a strong peer group that's been there, done that, that you can mm -hmm. lean on and ask questions, that will help get you through some of those tough times. But if you're if you're running solo, it's really like you either have to be like the Andy Elliott's of the world and just super disciplined right. or you are screwed. So you surround yeah. yourself with supportive people, the people that have been where you want to be and have already gotten there. So they were like, oh, okay, no, that's no problem. Here's what you do. And, um, and then it's just you, okay, you know what to do. It's just the effort and you just have to, you know, 
it is what it is. And like any skill, yeah, sales is a numbers game, and, but it also is a skill game. You're not going to be great. You're closing rates low when you start. But as you get more comfortable talking to people, you will learn things that you didn't know a month ago, six months ago, a year ago, and you just get better. But the key there is getting past that that hump at the beginning. Like it's tough because yeah. there's so much. Like if you're looking at a chart, it's just like it's like flat, flat, because it looks like it's not going anywhere for a good two, three, four, six months, depending on where you are. And then all right. this work you put in, it just magically starts hockey sticking at the end because you planted all the seeds, you've done all the base work, you've got the strong foundation, and then bam, you get a call here, you get an opportunity here. And yeah. when you get the opportunities, take advantage of them. But uh, it's that, that, that beginning part, so many people quit, which is a shame um, because this anyone can kill it in this business. But the problem is, I just, like you said, they just don't have a mentor. They don't have a good support system and true. Just fall back into, okay, I got to get a job now. I got to, you know, go, go do something more secure, which is a shame. Honestly, I, I hate to see it because we see it, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But uh, it's kind of, it's the jungle out there, but the best way to find <laughs> the jungle is to get a lot of other hunters around you that are, that are really good and can show you the way. So that's kind of the best analogy I can give for it. Um, yeah. I mean, one thing I realized, I, I couldn't outwork my ignorance. You know, I don't, I, yes. I don't have 24 hours a day, like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to outwork my ignorance to say, I need a mentor. I need a peer group. I can lean on. I was, I was, I was on an Island. I was on a, a, an entrepreneur Island because no one else I knew was also, were also signing agents. I had no one to talk to. I had no one to relate to. I'm just like, I just felt alone. And it was when I finally just said, I need to stop being prideful. I need to get a mentor. I need to get with an, an organization where I, I can get on the inside scoop. And that's it's when I took off. It's really when I took, I mean, you could say I, I was, I took off because I was making six figures, but I was alone and I was, I couldn't outwork my ignorance. Once I got into that peer group, I have just taken off because I've surrounded myself with people that can help me. I'm not alone. And I would exactly. And I would imagine once you took off and you got those peers and you were getting more direct work instead of less signing services, you're getting more buying more of your time back and you're getting to spend yeah. with more, you know, the people that are most important to you, your daughters, your wife and your family and doing the activities you want to do, which is kind of part of the reason that I, you know, I like this, the channel that you and I are doing is we're giving back to the community. For me, I, I want people, and I'm sure you do too, to be more successful in their business. So they have the option to have more time with their yes. family, whether it's as a signing agent, signing service owner, running other businesses, but you have the option. If you want to, you know, keep working in different businesses, passive, semi-passive, active, it's up to you. You have the option. Um, but the whole point is to have that freedom that the people working their jobs we really don't have, unfortunately. So that's, uh, true. that's why I love this. Um, so pivoting to what is Derek Van Otten's end goal? What are you working so hard for? What what uh, what do you think? And I know this answer will change in a year when I talk to you again, but right sooner. But what's kind of your end goal? What would you like to be working for, uh, striving striving for in your business? What, what do you see yourself in five, ten years? I mean, what would that look like for you? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I I have a I have a soon goal, and one my one of my soon goals is to have a million dollar signing service. Nice. Um, the ultimate goal is to have a five million dollar signing service in the next yeah maybe five to ten years. Have a five million dollar signing service. Um, spending a lot of time doing the things I want right now. I, sometimes I feel like I just spend a lot of time working. Luckily, I'm I I have become passionate about what I do, and I love what I do, and it's it's enjoyable. And I'm able to break away and do things that I personally want to do whenever I want. And I, and I love that concept of it, but I would like to, I like to do more of the things I like. I, you know, traveling the world has, has become uh, an ideology that I really want to accomplish because I, you get a sense of how lucky we are to be in the U S to have the freedoms that we have. And you don't really notice that till you travel the world and see other places and, and the, the world is beautiful. So that's, that's one of my goals. I want to be traveling a lot with my wife and and my kids and like explore the world that we've got where where you know we're on this on this planet for a short time believe it or not it's it, it happens quick and so i don't uh, i don't want it to have i don't want it to fly by me i want to i want to enjoy as much as i can and so traveling has been a big part uh investing in real estate is is a journey that we're starting right now that i'm i've kind of found that to be a little fun so we're just kind of in the early stages of getting that started and uh, I, I think that will be fun as well. You know, doing what we do, we get to see, you know, wealthy people and we get to see these big houses. We're like, hey, what do you do? And I, I try to pick the brains of people that have these really nice houses. But I mean, these closings and I want to pick their brain a little bit and see what they do and, and see what anything sparks interest in me. I, I'm not going to do everything, you know, 
but there's things that I think that I will like and I would like to dabble in. So, so that's, that's where kind of where I see us in the next five to 10 years. Love it. Yeah. I love the, uh, the travel resonates with me a lot too. Uh, the real estate does too, but, um, but, but, but the travel is, is something that appeals to me too. I would love in the next 10 years to just go not only, you know, all the places we been talking about the last 10 years of marriage to go, you know, when I was working for other people, right. Um, but also, you know, in, in different countries as well, places we haven't talked about as much because, you know, to be full disclosure, the prior, you know, 10 years before I started this journey, like there wasn't, there wasn't going to be a money for let's travel to Europe. Let's travel, you know, uh, you know, multiple different places across the country throughout the year. It just wasn't there. It right. was stock away money for 401k and we got the bills covered. And we got a little bit of local stuff for the kids and, and that's it. Like, and there's not a, a yeah. lot of uh, excess. And now that we're kind of transitioning into, okay, we're working toward having that excess that we can continue to do the things we're talking about, investing in real estate, having, leaving a legacy for our family, but also having access to travel. And that's the part of the, the equation yes. that, that is for me has been missing. Well, we have covered a bunch. Uh, I think we are wrapping it up. Uh, I know you said you're peak All signing. Right. Uh, is that your website name? Peak signing.com. Yep. Peak signing.com. All, all social media handles. I got those as well. Peak signing YouTube peak signing. So it's all, it's all there. I own it all. Awesome. So I'm actually going to link Derek's uh, site as well as his link tree in the description below. Please hit him up. Not only as a signing agent, if you're not already uh, working with this signing service, you're missing out. Number yes. one, because he runs a great service, pays his own time, a great communicator. And just, uh, you can see he's a nice guy. Uh, first off. And then second off, if you're not watching his, listening to his podcast or watching his YouTube channel, what are you doing? The man has about a hundred episodes <laughs> on his YouTube dedicated yeah. to signing agent. If you are watching my channel and you're not subscribed to him, you are missing out. So go subscribe to Derek's YouTube channel. Now check him out on the Spotify or anywhere where app or podcasts are. And then yep. give him a thumbs up, people. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, hanging out with me on an evening during the week. Uh, we're setting aside time to do this while our families are other parts of the house and the kids. Yeah, are they're somewhere. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you being here so you can inspire and educate notaries uh, just like you do every day on your channel. But I wanted to give my my people's a taste of the Utah experience. So I think they got a yes. lot more than they, more than they probably were bargaining for. Um, but I'm so glad that you came on and, uh, and I appreciate your friendship because it, it inspires me every day to try to get better. And you are actually my inspiration for my YouTube channel because I admire oh, great. what you're doing. So seen all 95 episodes you have uh multiple times yeah and uh, oh great you're welcome for the watch hours and uh <laughs> but uh I, and i do doing. keep doing what you're doing i love it no appreciate that if you guys go to my uh podcast youtube channel guess what you're gonna find a, an episode with me and brad together as well oh so. yeah yep. <laughs> so i appreciate your your friendship and all the advice that you've uh given me along the way so thank you brad my pleasure well if you have made it to the end of the video you have one task left to do. It's very easy. It's free. Hit the subscribe button right down below. Do it right now. Come on. Turn on the bell if you want notifications. I'm putting out content every week. The second most consistent notary channel on the web. <laughs> right behind Eric. But I'm catching up. Uh, and then also, you are the 1%. I appreciate you watching to the end. Because if you're watching to the end, you are a diehard person trying to get better at their business. And I am yeah. And you are going to be going places. So thank you for watching. And Derek, thank you for being here. I appreciate the heck Anytime. of Anytime. Awesome. Well, guys, take care. And until next time, peace.